So vertical projectile motion, and this time we've got an example of a ball which is being thrown up, directly up, and it, it stops at the top and then comes down again and back to the same height that it was thrown from. That's, that's what that line is meant to represent. Um, typically someone actually throws it from a, a distance above the ground um, and the actual ground is down here and it releases from their hand higher up, uh, say a metre and a half or so. But um, that's, if you, as long as you're aware of that, you can take that into account with your calculations. Um, so we're only considering this distance here. Um, we uh, are going to say that this has been thrown at 5 meters per second. So our initial velocity is going to be 5 meters per second. Um, notice that we're not worrying too much about significant figures with these because that's not the focus. So we just have one... Uh, 5 meters per second number to worry about. Um, and uh, we can also make a fair assumption that the acceleration due to gravity uh, is equal to uh, 10 meters per second squared. Okay, so that gives us enough raw information to start um, working from. Um, the this, this part here, your acceleration, that's, that's an assumption that is fair and reasonable. If they don't tell you that in the question, you can still um, assume that that is the case and you'd have to look um, for a list on uh, exam papers or wherever it's recorded um, of the actual value of the constant g. Um, but in any case, uh, what do we know? We know that vi equals 5 meters per second. We know that uh, the initial velocity, oh, we just, the final velocity right at the top here, Vf, has to be zero meters per second. If it's uh, not zero, it hasn't reached the top. Um, because if we're dealing with our vectors um, in the up direction, you're gradually decreasing the velocity, so it starts at five meters per second, and then uh, it reaches zero right at the top, and it accelerates back again down the bottom. And because it is symmetrical on the way up uh, to the way down, that means the final velocity right at the bottom over here is also 5 meters per second. So uh, we, the easiest way to deal with these is to consider just half of the uh, flight. So everything we're talking about here, the initial velocity, the final velocity, um, the, the time, which is also one of the unknowns, um, and uh, yeah, all of the variables, that we're only considering it for half. So remember that when it comes to finding the time of the entire flight, we need to f double whatever we get. Um, our equations can be a little bit confusing if we, um, if we don't deal with half of the flight. Then when we get into horizontal projectile motion, we can consider the vertical um, movement separately from the horizontal and that simplifies things. Just remember that for now. Um, so we've got initial velocity, uh, we were just talking about the final velocity is zero, um, we've got the acceleration, we don't know what the displacement or the distance of this is, um, have we got enough to be able to calculate anything? Um, I'm just going to go and pause this and, and I'm going to grab the kinematic equations for us to have a look at. Um, for now, let's shuffle that out of the way and I'll bring the kinematic equations in. So there we go, we've got the kinematic equations at the top right there. And uh, let's just go through them and see what we can, what we can work out. Because um, we want to find both of our unknowns and then we've analysed the situation to death. So let's look at time first. How can we find the time? Uh, we've got, we, uh, I'm just staring straight at this one here first. And sometimes your instincts will um, be trained enough to lead you to the right equation without having to think too much. For this one, um, we've got the final velocity is zero. We've got the initial velocity, five meters per second. We've got the acceleration. So that means the only unknown is the time. So we can use that one to calculate the time. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, down the bottom here, we've got Vf equals Vi plus At. Putting everything together in one place so that's nice and easy. Uh, to see we've now got all the variables down the side there and we've got the equation over here as well so substituting actually before we substitute let's rearrange this to um, to make it a little bit simpler um, later on so we're trying to get t by itself so uh, vf minus vi 
equals AT. So I've just taken the VI away from both sides. Um, and then moving up a little bit. Um, then we want to bring A over here. So we're going to divide both sides by A. And on the left hand side we can't cancel, but on this side we can. So that leaves us with T equals VF minus VI over A. Now we can substitute our numbers in. Let me know, final velocity is 0, minus 5, uh, divided by the acceleration. So you can see this is a change in velocity over the acceleration. Um, this is our acceleration formula rearranged. Uh, and the acceleration we decided was 10 meters per second. So that gives us a time from the initial point to the top of, uh, it says, negative 0 0.5 seconds. What does that negative mean? Um, not a lot to be honest. <laughs> we can actually eliminate the negative if, we, if we're dealing with our vectors properly because um, if our initial velocity is upwards, that's a positive direction, our, our force due to gravity and our acceleration due to gravity is downwards which is a negative direction. So technically we should have a negative in, in front of our 10 here. In which case, the negative 5 on the top, 0 minus 5 is negative 5, will cancel out the negative on the bottom from the negative 10. So we're left with just a, a positive 0 0.5 seconds. And my S looks like a 5, but you get the idea. So anyway, uh, that gives us an answer. Um, for that, let's just underline our answer, as is wise to do. And we can put a little tick up there because we know that we've just calculated that. It's very hard to be precise with an iPad stylus. Um, coming back over to our list here, um, looking at another kinematic equation, um, we have the, uh, we're after D, the displacement. Now at this point um, it wouldn't actually matter uh, which equation we use because we've got all of the information. Um, but let's just go for an easy one, so we've got two equations which have actually got D in them. Um, this one's looking a little bit easier to my mind for no particular reason, but we'll try that out. Um, D equals VI plus VF over 2 times the time. Um, so let's just plug our numbers in because we've got all our numbers, we've got all our equation um, going there. And let's just shift that across and out of the way. Uh, D equals VI, initial velocity was 5 meters per second, plus VF is 0, divided by 2, times by the time we just calculated was 0 0.5. Okay, and what does that give us? We've got 5 divided by 2 is uh, 2.5, and then 2.5 times 0 0.5, 0 times by 0 0.5 is the same effectively as dividing by 2 again, so it's actually 5 divided by 4 in total, which gives us 1.25. Okay, we're not rounding here. Um, units for distance is meters, and that there is our, our answer. Now, final step, really important, um, we've got that, final step really important is to note that this is only for half the flight, so if we're considering the time for the full flight, um, let's just shuffle over to a bit more space, Time for the full full flight um, is going to be two times zero point five, which equals one second. It's good to put these little bits on to make a one not look like an eye. And it kind of looks like a fifteen. Let's try and okay. Anyway, one second. That's the time of the full flight, and then the the um, displacement on the way up plus on the way down is going to be double that. Is 2.5 meters. So very important to remember that. And once again another long video so uh, you can have a star and we'll make it a purple star just because for some reason purple is a cool color and a smiley face. Thank you very much.